Hey everybody, so you know how sometimes you're reading a book and you want to make sure everybody is reading it with you? Well, today I'm here to tell you about three books that I was so excited to read in 2024 that have proven to be even better than I thought they were going to be, and I need them on your TBR. So let's get started. Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. It's Russell with Ink and Paper Blog. How are you all doing today? As always, I hope you're happy, I hope you're healthy, I hope you're safe, and of course I hope you're reading an amazing book or two or three or four. Um, I know it's been a while since I've been here on my channel. Uh, we were dealing with a little bit of being sick for quite a while it seemed like we couldn't get rid of it, and then I had a ton of work travel, so the weekends turned into really just getting my life back into to order um, and doing a bunch of family stuff. So I am here though because I have been reading. I do have books to tell you about, so we might as well share them. So get out your pen, get out your paper, get out your Goodreads, however you keep track of your TBR. If you are so able, please order these books from your local independent bookstore, or if you are a library user, get a copy at your local library. So this is these are three books that I was really excited to read in 2024, three um, authors that I've been following, and I was like, okay, this is going to be it. And let me tell you, these books have been fantastic. I finished one and I am in the middle of two other ones and goodness gracious. The first book I'm going to tell you about, probably the one that needs the least introduction because it's on most people's lips and deservedly so, is James by Percival Everett. This is out from Doubleday. It came out last week. Um, thank you Doubleday for sending me an advanced copy. I had finished it a couple of weeks before it was out. I went right to the bookstore and I bought a number of copies, one for myself of course, and then I have been giving this book out to just about everybody. Um, so James is Percival Everett's reimagination of the uh, Huckleberry Finn story from the point of view of James, or as we know him, Jim, in, from the Huckleberry Finn book. You do not have to have read Mark Twain's novel in order to enjoy or be blown away by James in no way, shape, or form. Um, what um, this is actually a very difficult novel to sort of not spoil in that I could sort of just talk about all of it in, <laughs> and uh, probably have a 25-minute video. But what this book does is it sort of turns the idea of Huckleberry Finn on its head. It makes James more than the character he is, caricature he is in that book, and he sort of flushes him out as a person, a human, a father, a friend. Um, and it sort of takes the terror that sort of was lurking behind Huckleberry Finn, a man who, uh, you know, James has been, uh, is thought to have, he's going to be sold, taken away from his family. He runs away and he's going to try to find his way back to his family in order to um, purchase them so he can move north. But Percival Everett does a lot more than just have that sort of storyline. The way his language is, the way he deals with all of what's going on in that time period and sort of flips the script is just brilliant. And I want you to read it. I do not want to tell you about it. You will not forget James. You will not forget this book. You will not forget this experience. I promise you. So please pick up James by Percival Everett out from Doubleday. It is amazing. Okay. So the next book that I want to tell you about is the fictional debut of an author that I know and you know, um, probably solely from his memoir. And that is all the World Beside by Garrett Connolly, and this is out from Riverhead Books. Now, we all know um, Garrett from uh, Boy Erased, which was his memoir that uh, was out and everywhere for a while, and then it was turned into a film, and I think Nicole Kidman, wasn't it? Was it Nicole Kidman, Russell Crowe? It got some Oscar love, if I don't... Um, if I'm not mistaken. But so what does he do? He, of course, does not write like another sort of uh, contemporary day um, novel. His first novel is set in the 18th century in Puritan New England in Massachusetts. And it's the love story of two men, uh, the local reverend, um, who is got this voice that people are just drawn to in the church. Like he just, he delivers his sermons with such passion and people are just sort of um, always in awe of his religious um, devotion. I think that's the right word. And the story, uh, and he is um, sort of forbiddenly in love with this um doctor who has come to town. They both have families, but they're like attraction to one another 
is is just something that they cannot seem to ignore. Um, what I love, love, love about this book is that it feels like a novel that comes from this time period. Um, Ryan was over for dinner the other night and we were talking about it and he goes, so it sort of has like a gay scarlet letter feel and it was, that was it. That was just like in my mind, I cannot get that out of my head. But the language and the beauty of the writing, it's got that density of that sort of um, 18th century American prose to it. Um, but the people are so real. They jump off the page and sort of, I'm not um, as far as I would like to be to say that, um, but the people are so real to me that I'm like, I can't get them out of my head. Um, so I am absolutely loving this book and I want you all to read it. That's All the World Beside by Gerard Connolly out from Riverhead Books. And last but not least in this um, uh, section of books, these are all three very, very different books, by the way, um, is The Extinction the extinction of Irina Ray by Jennifer Croft. This is out from Bloomsbury. Um, now, so Jennifer Croft is really well known as a translator. You know, she won the Man Booker for translating um, flights um, by Olga, and I cannot say Olga's last name, so I'm not going to try because I uh, will butcher it. Um, I think she's been nominated for the National Book Award in translation, translation a couple times now, um, and she is an amazing, amazing translator. And then she wrote a memoir called Homesick that did very, very well. I think it was shortlisted for the Women's Prize, right? Um, and then now... She has this book of fiction, and this just sort of sits in the pocket of what makes Jennifer Croft brilliant. So this is the story of a group of translators. They all translate a sole author, an author who is from Poland, who has called all of her translators together, and it turns out every time she's going to um, publish a new book, they all come together, and they have sort of this ceremony in this house on the edge of this um, remote forest, in Poland, um, and they come together and they start to translate the book with her, all in their separate languages. Now, this book itself is um, sort of the conceit of it is all, is that it's being translated from a novel or a book that was written about the experience that the translators went through when they arrived and Irina, Irina disappeared. And she wasn't there, and everything that they thought they knew is completely not there anymore and the, how do they struggle with it what is fantastic is that the book is being translated by someone who is a character in someone else's novel and has disagreements with how they're portrayed so it's very very clever um but it's also like very differential to the to the world of literature to the world of translation to the this idea of words and language and all of that our main character is um i want to say from Brazil, you know, sometimes you think you know something and you're like, yeah, it's, she's from Brazil, I'm pretty sure. Um, and she's translating. Um, and then, yeah, no, it is one of those books that it was not what I thought it was going to be. And then it turned out to be even better than I thought it was going to be. Um, I'm about halfway through. I cannot wait to see the twists and turns it continues to take. So that's The Extinction. Extinction? I can't say that word today. The Extinction of Irina Ray by Jennifer Croft out from Bloomsbury. And those are three books that I know if you were to go out and pick them up right now. Let's see if I can get that in frame real quick. You would love every single one of them. So I hope that you give them all a go. As always, if you are a new subscriber to my channel, thank you. I hope you stick around um, and you hit subscribe and all of that. If you are a return subscriber, I couldn't do this without you. Thank you so much for your patience and your comments and uh, your engagement. Um, I love all of you for everything you do. And as always, I encourage you to read globally, shop locally. And until next time, I wish you happy reading. Bye, everyone.